so now we're going to assemble one of these wheel brackets. We've got a top piece, a bottom piece. Uh, we've got pegs and axles and connectors. These are all 3D printed. You'll also need some bearings. These are just, um, these are 604Z bearings. They're sometimes listed uh, as four by 12 by four. That covers the dimensions of the bearing. And then you'll need any kind of PC4 M6 uh, connector. I know these are often called Festo connectors. Um, I, don't, I think that's actually a brand name rather than a, than a specification of the pneumatic tube connector. But that's going to allow us to feed the, the tube directly into the multi-material unit and also into our filament storage. So I'll start by grabbing an axle, putting that through. Now make sure you're doing this where this does have the chamfering here so that it goes all the way and sits should sit a little more than, it should actually be indented a little, but at a minimum sit flat. And I'll put that there. We're gonna put a bearing into the wheel here. Should be able to push them through. Sometimes when I was, uh, if it's a little, if the tolerance is a little tight and kind of push it down on the table, that should get what you need done. And then put the push the bearing over the axle and kind of, tight down in there so that you can see the threading. And then once you've got that set, you can go ahead and lay the, the bottom bracket into place um, or and, and kind of flip it over here. You can generally screw these just by hand. Uh, a, a US coin, I've used a dime here. That's pretty helpful, tightening it up uh, once it's in place. And then we'll take two of these connector screws and just the same thing, tighten them by hand. You might wanna use a coin to get them in all the way. I can probably just get away with using my thumbnails for this. And just Get them a little snug for now, just to show you how they fit into the top bracket here. A couple extra turns. Same down here. Okay, so now I'm looking at this and I don't know if you can tell on the video, but this looks a little pushed this way. So I'm guessing it's not gonna spin too freely. It's not too bad, but you do wanna spend a little time kind of trying to get this just settled as close to the middle uh, of the two brackets as you can. And of course, always super frustrating to get it to just a smidge over. But basically the idea when you when you spin it, you want them to spin, should spin a little more freely than this. So take another shot here. Now that the axle is not quite tight in either. So that probably isn't helping here. But all right, I think, yeah. If you look at this, this has a nice, easy, easy spin to it. That's really what you're going for. And once you've got these pieces in place, there's a, there's a catch. Uh, you can't see this at all. There's a catch on the far side of this top bracket. And that will fit into a slot here. So you just kind of at an angle, put it in here and then put this into place. And then when that's done, this end is going to be held in place just with a peg. So again, as I've got different colored wheels, I've also got different colored pegs here. So it's easy to identify. Probably want to leave those oriented top and down, although there's plenty of room for it to go. And you see that's pretty reasonably held into place. So then the final sort of bit you're going to want to do here is to get the PTFE quick release in place. Um, don't want to, I probably just turned that a little too tight. You know, this is a, a PLA slot for this. So the, you know, you can't tighten these too, too tight, but you should be able to get them reasonably tight. And again, if, if this is too loose, tightening down the top piece may help a little. 
And that's it. We'll have to assemble four more of these, get this in place, and then we should be able to put it on the back of the printer.